Hello and welcome to this new episode of the Moment podcast. I'm here today with Lynn and we're going to talk about the archetype of the sacred tree. So first of all, uh, yes, welcome uh, back, Lynn. Thank you. You. So yeah, regarding the, the sacred tree archetype, um, Maybe I could bring up a few examples for the people listening about, uh, yeah, about that. Mm, well, the sacred tree archetype really makes me also think about the the world tree, for instance, but also, I guess, more generally trees, um, kind of more generally, like how different animistic cultures uh for instance have uh, particular trees that are sacred to them like oaks or mm, like birches or like um willows and uh, such kind of trees like you know the celtic uh people also had that for instance and yeah it kind of th- makes me think about uh that you know and the like I said, the world tree kind of symbolism uh, within different mythologies, like the Norse uh, world tree, for instance. But, you know, they mm. also have that in shamanic cultures too. And uh, yeah, kind of makes me think about uh, about that and I guess sacred groves to some degree too that we talked about in another earlier episode at some point. Yes. What about you? Well... All the above, and then also, in a way, like the world tree, how I see it is like that it's like a a symbol of all the different levels and fractals of reality, and like the fact that they're all part of one one thing that can be seen as a tree, a fractal in that sense Hmm. and then like also yeah I guess it's like a symbol of interconnectedness in that sense I think that's one very main theme that it has and also like when different cultures are relating to the tree as sacred then uh, that also has to do with interconnection and relating to our environment, like how we are so um, so intimately linked to the trees and to nature, mm. and that that we arise, kind of like how the Buddhists say, like uh, is it mutual arising or? Yeah, this mutual arising, yeah. Yeah, so it's really it's like there's a saying of about that, like what happened to the tree happened to the human in a way. Mm. So, yeah, mm. we really need the trees. Kind of makes me think too about like different creation myths too. Like the, for instance, the the Norse one, for instance, uh, comes to mind. How humans, and I suppose, I think it was also because there's the ones that are you know like humans are made out of clay or something like, like that. But there's like with the Norse, uh, with Norse mythology, you have that they're made out of the um, specific type of trees. I think it is the ash tree, so the rowan tree that the humans are mm. uh, made out of. It kind of also symbolizes this kind of special connection between humans and trees in that way too. And um, yeah, and it kind of makes sense to regarding, you know, the, the sacred nature of the the ash tree, so the rowan tree for the Norse and also the oak tree and 
similar type of trees. Even though the oak tree is not just for the Norse was considered sacred, but also for the Celtic and the Greek had that too. They would like interpret the um, the movements of the leaves and the branches as like um, signs and omens. And use that oh. for prophecy and um yeah, and it was mm. like the central tree uh for some of the groves, the um, oak. Yeah, and the leaves also have like medicinal properties, many mm. of the leafy trees that I've heard of or read about, oak too. It's like antiseptic, the leaves, and you can use it on, on wounds. For instance, with the oak. And then also like with a lot of the leafy trees. That. Yeah, they're, they're not as common anymore because of like how we how we're like having the. Mm. The industry favors specific trees so people grow those trees and then the leafy trees are not as popular to grow or let them grow they naturally do spread but um with the wind and with the birds but like mm. they're often cut cut down and then there's not very much diversity and why it is important is because we need that habitat to be there. A variety of habitat for a variety of different birds and animals, which is very important, and different insects that are also important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, that's really, I think, I guess, like, uh, more rational way of looking at why the trees might be important to regard as sacred so to speak even if you're not um, spiritual uh, or mm. think about that sort of perspective then you can think about it also from like a relational perspective that we need our environment to be diverse for us to have a good life and to uh, yeah to live here together with all the different life forms mm. yeah but it kind of also um, makes me really think about the tree kind of also symbolizing in a way you know with the seasons especially leafy trees the um, you know, the seasonal change and kind of the process of like, um, you know, life and, and um, you know, in autumn, the decay and then death kind of symbolism, which is very mm. prevalent in the more pagan and animistic kind of ways of thinking about the world. So it's it's a very fitting symbol for that regarding, you know, the leaves, how they come and then they, you know, go in the, in the winter and mm. um, symbolizing that, but also kind of made me think about uh, trees and the forest kind of too, that then, you know, once they're, you know, old or they fell over and then they're, they're lying, that's, that's kind of also uh, part of, I guess, the, the death and kind of decay kind of process too. But, you know, from that then also comes the, um, the new nourishment for for the other trees. Oh yeah, it's very important to have those. Like uh, also dead wood lying in the forest because it's it's actually essential for some species that are like very key for the ecosystem to have that sort of decaying wood trees around so mm. that is very good point and also like with the the kind of cyclical death and rebirth of nature i guess we can learn from it like that sometimes we we need to let go of of what has been and then 
rest for a while and then we can ma make something new. And really cyclically that happens with the moon every month, but also with yeah. the year and mm. different personal cycles. Yeah, but it, it very much yeah, it makes me think about like kind of that death and rebirth kind of symbolism with it. And really brings to mind too regarding uh, symbols of transformation I think it was in that Carl Jung was talking about the tree as a symbol of like libido but also kind of how it was both kind of the symbol of the great mother but also kind of a masculine uh, like phallus symbol at the same time it's kind of like combining the um, the masculine and feminine in, in a in itself in, the, in that way yes Yes, it, it is a symbol of the self in that sense, mm. of of the union of opposites. And a tree, you know, it's it starts from the ground, or from the earth, and it reaches the sky with its branches. So it's also there like a union of opposites of earth and sky. Yeah. And brings to mind for me about the that one video I did like a uh, quite a while ago at this point about the uh, Ninguta China shamanism um, kind of like yeah these people uh, that were there you know practicing their shamanic beliefs and how they were Having the same kind of sentiment about that, about like connecting kind of the the heaven and uh, and earth, but also they connected it to like kind of like nature kind of spirits, like tree kind of nature related spirits, kind of like I mean you could call it tree spirits to some degree, but then mm -hmm. also ancestors too. So they yeah. they were like decorating the tree. Um, uh, yeah, they were decorating the tree and then uh, did libations and then were celebrating uh, their ancestors with that. But the tree, you know, was then a symbol um, connecting them to their ancestors. Mm. Yes, and I think it makes sense with like a lot of trees grow older than humans. So in a way, they bring that longer time perspective to us. And I think that's why um, older trees really feel uh, like, yeah, they, they really connect us to further back. I mean, they, they were alive when some of our ancestors were alive still and they're still here, so in a way, yes, that makes sense that it would connect us to them, especially with, I guess, the older trees. But I mean, as, um, I guess, families of trees, the trees, uh, their forebears were there with our human ancestors and lived together, and now we're here with their offspring and yeah it it gives that perspective of of the interconnectedness with not only the generations but also like the different life forms and how we are mm. here uh, sharing this experience of being alive on earth Yeah. I know that there's there has been these mm -hmm. different traditions about also about the sacred groves where they were places that were set apart for connecting with nature and also honoring the Honoring the ancestors or connecting with that and 
I think that's a great practice. And it, I feel like it even happens kind of subconsciously, even if we don't think about it that way when we go out and just spend time in nature. Yeah. And I don't know when I'm thinking further about it too. It's kind of um, what came to mind more is kind of like how I think the it was the mistletoe, uh, right? That was the sun of the of the of the tree, kind of sim symbolically, and like how the um, how that kind of symbolism was uh, was was in it, and I yeah, you can kind of see that kind of in these tr uh, in these different traditions, like how they. kind of um yeah Thai it's kind of like it, it connects us to the the ecosystem and kind of the the natural world itself but also it symbolizes our own inner I guess psychological reality at the same time as well mm. you know um connected to I guess libido to to some de uh, degree but also i guess the unfolding of i guess like the personality of the person to like a tree kind of like growing and unfolding itself but i guess that's kind of true for all life uh, all plants that grow kind of as a mm -hmm. way of seeing it but i guess like a tree especially is like a is like a potent symbol of that to because you know it, it does grow um pretty old and tall and strong and mm, and even in death it's kind of like a, a foundation for new life at the same time when when a tree is alive it it feeds a lot of beings and well, when it when it dies, it still keeps feeding beings. <laughs> it's very generous. It mm. shares itself. Mm. Yeah, but not just like. I guess just uh, regarding like beings, like uh, I guess animal beings, but also with other plants as well, via the roots, mm -hmm. like how it shares with uh, with the like the older trees share with the younger ones. Mm -hmm. hmm. I don't know. With a lot of it, kind of like it does make me kind of think about the the self in that way. Like the self is kind of like very similar in, in, in nature to that regarding like, you know, the, just like the, I guess the, the flowing of, of kind of the, the energy and the unfolding and the growing that kind of happens more like effortless, uh, in an effortless manner. That's kind of like more, I guess, I guess you could call it generous or like just it flows without mm. any um yeah any like preconceived like in, uh, intention it just it it just does what it does mm. and yeah for those who don't know we're talking about the jungian self mm, yeah as a concept yeah the the jungian self being and um you know the center of the um, personality of the psyche that's like very much deeper than you know the conscious self 
so very much the the more inner um, authentic aspects that combine both conscious and unconscious but I guess also masculine and feminine and kind of like heaven and earth and um, various aspects really yeah so yeah kind of and then can think of it also as like um collective self too or that's a different or like yeah an additional level of it kind of like we yeah. have our personal unconscious but then there's the collective unconscious too and they're they're like in a relationship uh and and uh, affect each other so this in the same way uh, the collective self and our individual selves are in relationship and they affect each other mm. I would say yeah I, I very much see kind of the relationship between the personal self and the collective kind of self in the way of like the collective self is this very old tree that like stands there in the center with its like a very thick and deep uh, roots that spread uh, kind of all over, where the personal self is more like a young tree that that grows there, it kind of gets nurtured by the collective self in 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 that way, or like it's connected to it like through the roots. Mm. Yeah, because we don't uh, we don't exist or appear in a vacuum where. Yeah. Part of that continuum. Mm. Yeah, and and you know, like how with one particular tree, it uh, kind of connects to that. It connects in that way to all the different kind of trees at the same time. Which kind of makes mm -hmm. me think about like the banyan grove tree from like Avatar: The Last Airbender, for instance, too, because the um, it's kind of like one tree. But then there's all these different trees that grow uh, kind of from it, which are actually really the same tree because they sprout from the same roots and kind of symbolize in, 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 that, in that way kind of the, the sacred tree at the center uh, with all these offshoots kind of being part of it, but also kind of feeling like they're distinct um, self or like you know distinct tree at the same time as well but then it's all kind of interconnected and it very well symbolizes that in the show as well i kind of uh, feel like it's a, um, a good symbol of the self and kind of the collective self in in, in that sense as well uh that they did there within the show which i really mm. really much like and It had, yeah, kind of at the same time, uh, from what I remember, they, they were kind of like, you know, uh, hinting at the at the fact that, well, everything is kind of like inter uh, interconnected and kind of like interdependent on, uh, on, on each other in that way of like how all life depends on everything else and everything kind of arises because all everything else does. And I really do feel that, I guess, the, the tree in that way uh, has a lot to, I guess, teach us uh, in that way about, I guess, a way of, I guess, relating or like, yeah, to... To the ecosystem or kind of understanding i guess like more the interconnectedness of of us and the ecosystem and i guess like uh really our inner i guess like parts as well how they kind of this in in the same way kind of fit together and are, are all interconnected and kind of mm. part of the same tree uh, in a way like symbolically if you think of, uh, of the tree as the self mm. yes and 
That reminds me again about like the tree as a symbol of the mother. Where or like in the sense of like I guess how we are kind of held by that collective being, collective life, that life force embodied in all these different plants and animals and humans and everything. Yeah, and for me that further really just brings to mind something regarding the tree also uh, from the scapegoat book that I read. There was a section in it that talked about the, um, the tree as the, as the mother, uh, but also kind of that the tree symbolism uh, can represent this kind of embrace in the sense of that it can bring together like disparate parts of, of the self. Yeah, kind of like um, I guess like um, yeah, bring them together and kind of like mend them in some uh, in some way. Yeah, trees do that. They um, bring together nutrients from the soil, and they take nitrogen. Some of them, with the help of some bacteria out from the air. And, uh, and of course, carbon dioxide too, and transmute it into growth and, and mm. into oxygen. Yeah. Next and again, step. they're being generous, I guess, to, to the beings that need it. Mm. But they also well, keep the they, water. They, Oh yeah, they keep the water too. Mm. Yeah, go, they go ahead. They keep it there in the in the landscape. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. But what what did you wanna wanted to say before I brought that up? Yeah, I guess I was talking about how they bring different things together. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they're they're pretty great alchemists. These trees. Well, I would say so. Mm. So I really have a lot of gratitude for for the trees and. For, for, yeah, to be able to coexist with them and with the whole ecosystems too. But the trees especially are just really great. <laughs> I feel connected to them. Mm. And I guess, like, if someone feels curious about it, they can go and spend some time with some different trees in, in close by where you are or or even touch them see how that feels mm. stand there um, with your palm against it for a while and see how you feel about it mm. yeah I guess that kind of <clears throat> brings to mind like a question for for me really like yeah so kind of like for for you how does it 
I don't know, I guess like what I'm trying to, to say is kind of like what is for you really like the more the most like important like I guess significance of the of the tree and I guess it's it's sacredness in, in that sense. I think that is a very good question. Makes me think what's the most significant about it in the sense of sacredness. I do think like it has to do with that. It It really reminds me a lot about the how that how we are connected with everything. Mm -hmm. And in a way like that how I see it is How I see it is that the life force that we embody that animates us is the same life force that animates the trees. And for me, that life force is sacred. Mm. guess um i guess for myself it's it's kind of like a similar similar thing as well i guess for me i was also kind of like next to you know the, the life force so very much tied to the symbolism of kind of the different realms that it brings together, like the Norse, like a uh, world tree, for instance, like with the nine realms and, or like how the, um, in the shamanic sense, it's the, the three realms kind of like, you know, the, the lower, the middle and upper kind of world and how that kind of ties to kind of a well I guess nature itself because that that exists in nature but then also kind of symbolically at the same time connects to the um, the different regions of the brain as well like you know the more um, higher cognitive and then the um, emotional and more instinctual kind of uh, layers of the brain kind of the tree it's a symbol for that too. Mm. Yeah. And in a way it also links like the I guess the symbolism of the underworld, middle world and upper world in the in the sense of sometimes we go into the underworld and have like these dark night experiences where Yeah, we have suffering, and that's also part of life, and that's kind of part of embodiment and of us being mm. expressed in form when, like, then if we would have just spirit, then it's more like formless realms. Mm which also I believe exist, but I do believe that the spirit wanted to come here into form because it's a very different experience than being in the formless realm where there, okay, there's less restriction, but you don't really learn about the kind of the effects of 
of decisions and kind of consequences. So it it really leads to more evolution than if we would just be playing around in the formless realm. Mm. I think it's the the Buddhists that say about the formless realm that that the beings that live there that yeah they're they're very much at some point they get get very bored basically it's a pretty boring realm to to live in because I guess there's all that freedom to do uh, all these things but at some point you kind of just uh, I guess exhaust that. Because um, there's certain, I think it was because they can't really do certain things that we can uh, do in in this realm. That's kind of how they're talking about it. That too, yeah. I guess like the the more sensual, yeah, experience is is here, but then also like learning things about, I guess, the relating of different forms yeah and the experience is different and that's why even though there's like suffering here and challenge and that sort of experiences then it's still like worth it and yeah meaningful Mm. because there's like those different sides to it there, there might be difficulty, but there's also like the pleasure and joy and love that we can embody here in a different way. Mm. Yeah. And the tree also, I feel, represents that to some symbolic sense of embodiment and and being in form hmm. kind of anchoring that spirit into matter yeah and that's kind of one one thing regarding individuation that I've been reading about to uh, regarding I guess that entire process like how it more generally tends to be more I guess psychic in nature more about the mind and more like cerebral and how there's kind of this I guess in like within the Jungian uh, community I guess this uh, some sense of criticism about that that kind of like it needs to be more embodied or like that kind of needs to be more part of of that kind of experience too more of that kind of embodied kind of spiritual kind of experience like where the mind is more i guess integrated with the body in that in that way and kind of why i'm bringing that up is kind of like how because it made me kind of think about like how the tree kind of internally is like an, at the core very like it's very alive and very like um you know like it's more yeah more alive more fluid and green and fresh where more the outer core or like the outer layers that starts to you know like become more i guess like uh, like woody yeah, in 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 texture, and s- similarly, I kind of feel like how kind of like both with like well, kind of like we humans have that kind of too. We have this very fluid, kind of uh, fresh, um, flexible kind of part, but then we also kind of have that like more sturdy kind of part too. And at the same time, I kind of feel like it's a good metaphor for like kind of life force that's kind of like um, then starts to be embodied and kind of anchored into something more like um, dense or more, yeah, kind of symbolizing more like the um, 
the more like yeah material kind of side of it and you know also then how kind of it's the trunk that's kind of more of like that kind of dense uh kind of denseness has yeah it kind of has more of the denseness to it where the um, the tr- like you know the branches are much more flexible and kind of wavy and so there's kind of that in- interplay there between kind of the more I guess structured side of this uh, of the psyche, kind of like symbolically, uh, together with the more like adaptable kind of like more, um, yeah, adaptable kind of way of of being too. Yeah. Yeah, like how there's the kind of them of. The, the archetypes you could say the more um, foundational forces and mm. and uh, I guess symbols of our collective unconscious that have evolved over the thousands of years of our history as, as humans Hmm. And then the more flexible, I guess, personal um, personal um, Hmm. kind of like the like how you say the brain it has there's neuroplasticity it's like the it can change but the archetypes stay the same Mm. we can like change our personal patterns of how how we think and how how we act and how our synapses go but the archetypes are the same yeah they're the same there and then our personal way of how how they express that's then the leaves and the branches and that's like subject to change and all different cultures have then their own personal expressions of the archetypes Mm. like there's different trees in different locations there's also different human um I guess cultures that then express the archetypes differently, but the archetypes remain the same to to like some to some degree because they are they are shared from so hmm. Yeah, shared from so far back that we all resonate with those stories and energies and themes and characters. Yeah, and I guess in in, in that way, it's kind of like the the roots kind of like connect the different trees in, in, in that way. So it's kind of like there's that underlying foundation, and I guess this in the different stems are like different focuses of cultures, and then there's like the more personal expression that comes on top of that. But like, yeah, it's all embedded kind of in the same um, underlying foundation that's there, definitely. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but I do also kind of think though that there's one more thing regarding the tree too, that's kind of like a um, important symbol too that came to mind. Kind of thinking about the tower, like you know of the of the tower card and with like the star card. Oh, there's the tree um, on it. You know, like well, there's the woman too, but kind of more focusing on the tree right now regarding it kind of made me think about like how you know like a, 
uh, a tower is very I guess it just stands there rigid pretty rigid well sturdy but rigid but, but how kind of like the tree kind of like also moves with the wind and it's it's mm. kind of it's it's kind of like uh it has this structure to it and kind of like this um I guess it, you kind of feel like it's it is very like sturdy but then it's kind of both sturdy but flexible because if it would be uh, uh, inflexible mm. and it would be wind then it would just break or snap or otherwise mm. just fall over yeah that's a good like i guess lesson for us all to be more like trees rather than towers we don't want to have a tower moment we want to be able to be flexible and and bend with the winds that blow mm mm yeah, it kind of felt like bringing bringing that up uh, mainly because it kind of still again like you know like how the self does that kind of as a symbol uh, bringing like like opposites together at the same time and kind of the tree does that well in in this way how it's both kind of like in that way too kind of flexible but sturdy at the same time mm. like how it can move with um move with the wind and you know there's in that way really all these different yeah facets uh to to the symbolism of of the tree that are Kind of both, kind of like, yeah, just part of the tree in a more, very more, yeah, natural sense, but also serve as this symbol uh, for us as well, because it's kind of at the same time kind of true of us, but I guess very much life itself, kind of how life is both uh, sturdy and kind of like, um, has this like, re or like, kind of structure to it but it's at the same time very uh, adaptable and kind of like going um like moving and rocking uh, around and like like the tree does like in in that way of like moving with the wind and um kind of like the leaves of the tree very like adaptable and kind of like changing too I kind of feel that mm. that is the last thing I wanted to say. I kind of feel like that's an, uh, something that we can learn from as as humans and I guess like society um, in that sense as well. Yeah, and like if you then think again that at the symbolism of the wind there would be also like life force or spirit. Yeah. Then like dancing with spirit moving with spirit that's really a great great metaphor for for life mm. like don't, uh, yeah if we get too rigid then we're not really participating in life that much so it's good to move around and and uh yeah. Interact with that wind and life force and spirit. Mm. Yeah, good yeah. points. Good points. I think I still Yeah. Still was looking was looking at the symbol of the the asteroid goddess mm -hmm. uh, Juno yeah, which links to ancient Greece and uh, she was originally representing like 
uh, prosperity and all uh, the the wild and the, all the ve uh, vegetative life, so all plants. And her symbol looks a bit, I feel like a tree. So, and she's really is like the goddess of relating, of relating in, in different ways, like in personal relationships and also to, to the environment. So I wanted to bring that up too as, as one like side shoot of this symbol. Yeah, and it kind of makes sense regarding the symbolism of Juno too, because I know regarding, I guess, like Juno and Hera in that sense in ancient Greece, uh, specifically to Hera, that an older uh, archaic form of Hera um, exists in the form of Dione, where Diona is specifically linked to uh, the oak tree uh, as a means of like prophecy and kind of like interpreting the the omens. I guess the uh, it was the um, the wind blowing through the um, through the leaves that was interpreted. And anyway, she she is similarly like this kind of. Sovereignty goddess linked to, well, I guess, prophecy, but also, like, water and kind of, like, life force and um, and trees, but also sacred groves as well. So being, like, an um, archaic expression of kind of what you were talking about as well. Yeah. A lot of the, the ancient goddesses were linked to the environment, the wild, and... Uh, yeah, I guess later we, or like that connection was, for the most part, I guess, at least to some degree forgotten. Even though, I mean, like, you can find it if you look for it. But I think that's a good perspective to bring back. Kind of, I guess, why... The environment is in the shape that it is right now, but we can turn it around. We can still rewild. Yeah. Another sacred tree symbolism thing that also comes to mind is the Christmas tree is like still a tradition to bring the spruce into the home and and have the star on on the on the top and different decorations. Yeah. And from what I remember, it represents the sense of, I guess, like, um, I guess the capacity for renewal, even in, I guess, the, um, the winter or the, you know, like, it's kind of, it's it's still green. So it kind mm. of represents the, the continuation of kind of, like, life and life force, even in the winter. Mm. And I think the... It was also specific like symbolism with it with the star and they used and well in the more ancient sense I guess candles and um or the things symbolizing like light. Yeah, and the return of the light like from the yeah. winter solstice, how it starts to then increase again. Yeah, and that then kind of death and rebirth in that sense of the cycle of the year. Mm. The furthest away from the sun, and then we start returning closer. Yeah, and at the same time, like yeah, it's the um, the symbolism again, kind of of like uh, representing heaven and earth, kind of coming together in that sense. But then, I think there was also something specific about like the presence, that, like what it symbolized. But it's kind of um, 
kind of lost that kind of uh, my insight regarding regarding that in the sense of like I don't remember uh, anymore what it specifically means, but there was some specific significance to it as well regarding the um, presence as well. But yeah, uh, really don't remember that one. But uh, anyways, there's there's a specific symbolic significance anyways uh, towards the the Christmas tree as a whole. And um, yeah. Mm. And then, like in the springtime, there are some trees that bloom, which is like then again very beautiful and very like beautiful uh, scents we can experience from that and then also the bees the pollinators benefit from that like with the rowan too but also a lot of different flowering trees which also happens like then you know cyclically like they're not blooming all the time but yeah it it comes once a year that time and I guess that could also be like in a way a reminder that we can't always be at our best or like blooming so to speak mm. that things happen in cycles and yeah there's the blooming and then there's the I guess brooding and then the release of the fruit and uh, then the release of the leaves and the rest of winter and then the return to spring and the rebirth again and we can apply that to our lives too like we can't always be do 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 and perform or yeah trying to find those natural rhythms that we we humans also have hmm. you know, live and dance with those hmm. and we can learn about those more from astrology and Yeah, that's really fascinating to me. Yeah, but the the dancing and, and kind of spring that you talked about makes me also think about the the maypole as well. Kind of like you know what's erected at like midsummer, and I um I just looked up uh, regarding it because I remembered something regarding the maypole originally. Uh, so the the may pole in that sense, not the, the maple in the sense of the tree, but the may pole that is used, you know, with the with the dancing that the people do around it. And I don't re <clears throat> had remembered that it originally used to be actually a tree instead of just a pole. And I looked up to confirm it, if I remembered correctly, and I did. Uh, apparently, it used to be a birch tree that was decorated. Oh, cool. People still decorate with birch trees sometimes, like for some different summer festivities, midsummer too. Mm. Birch leaves are high in vitamin C, especially the young leaves can make like a infusion. Mm. It kind of makes me think too, uh, you know, about like May and kind of spring and going into um, and kind of summer too. 
kind of like the celebration of of kind of life force in in that way too like fertility life force i guess it's like celebrated there mm -hmm. yeah it's like the when it is in full bloom in a way yeah like when it's the warmest and it really it's kind of at the different so well solstices and equinoxes it's really the same thing that we're celebrating just different phases of it yeah yeah that in, in the summer it's like the blooming of it and in the in the fall it's the harvest of it and and then in the winter it's like the the returning re return journey i guess and and then in the spring it's the the sprouting of it again and a new new life being born yeah and and the that... light coming mm. becoming the life increasing light yeah and life yeah and there's kind of uh with that kind of because you have the you know the um, it's the archetype of the sacred tree and you know and the tree itself as a symbol regarding that but you know, you know like the solar kind of symbolism which is kind of different symbolism symbolizes the same thing in 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 a different way regarding you know the sun uh, sunrise and sunset and kind of that kind of pattern so yeah it's very much that kind of universal pattern that's also very strongly expressed in in the tree as a symbol as well you know throughout the year uh in i guess like a I guess a longer pattern because you can see it with the sun um, more generally, but then I guess like there's the equinoxes too. But then at the same time, you know, the trees kind of reflect the the same thing, the same pattern, which I kind of feel ties w very well into astrology too. Because I think uh, one time you talked about kind of how with astrology kind of it's, symbolizes kind of the same pattern that happens like uh, all throughout life in different ways yeah yeah the different phases of the relationship between the different planets and their different length of of cycles together from the fastest with the moon then the year and uh yeah the different planets with their different lengths of cycles we got the new phase and uh then like the first quarter then the full which is kind of like I guess half cycle. Yeah. And then the third quarter which then leads again to a new through the balsamic letting go phase of before the the new phase again. It you can think of it kind of like a breathing in and then breathing out. And breathing in and breathing out and that's the cycle a breath is kind of one cycle in and out and with the seasons kind of like the the vegetation kind of breathes in and expands into the summer and then it contracts and goes back in uh dies back for the winter and then it again breathes in to the summer and breathes out for the winter yeah it's just uh, 
very much that kind of same interconnected pattern there with it definitely and um yeah i don't know if if there's any any anything more specific to for me at least that to to bring up about the 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 tree right now or i guess the those aspects well maybe i guess in the sense of like well what we talked about regarding i guess the tower and the tree and kind of like this kind of mix of like structure and 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 kind of like this adaptability kind of in the sense of i guess society or like i guess people in general i guess that that it's like a um, like a valuable lesson in that sense but i kind of already had said uh regarding regarding that already in that way there's kind of like that need for i guess like change but at the same time kind of keeping certain things uh, at the same time as well but yeah that kind of already said that so yeah I, i don't know if there's anything specific for for you like still that comes to mind I I guess really I guess could close on saying about just the trees are really inspiring in their resilience of how yeah they they are sturdy but flexible and then they can endure winters and then come back to life so to speak even though even in trees settling for winter vitality resides mm. and i guess for for me to end that kind of thought or like add really uh to it in in that sense is kind of like how the same with the self like there's this core that's there at the center you know that's life and even if i guess we we go into a phase of winter kind of where we're maybe not that that core doesn't get expressed in that way but you know we can kind of always reconnect with it and um you know and experience a sense of spring and summer again where you know it's there they're full in bloom i kind of feel like uh yeah it's true for trees but true for humans too mm. Mm. yeah that's beautiful mm. wow yeah. i've enjoyed this talk thank you very much bas yeah thank thank you as well lynn thank you Just wanted to um, yeah I guess I could mention still about yeah we have a support circle once a month in the fox den if you want to join our voice meetings you can join us oh yeah that's it's it's a good thing that you brought that up yeah and and it reminds me too about the uh, fox den and kind of like these round table talks that we're that we're doing what well that I'm st- uh, you know trying to start up more again this is work the the first one that I've uh done in a while again with other people so I'm a bit more I guess rusty uh regarding these things than than I'm usually am but anyways but yeah th- those are uh, happening again as well So if there's any particular topic that you would like uh to see us do or even participate in you can suggest a topic in the comments you can then you know join the fox den and yeah join um join these different talks and um yeah if there's any talk uh, gonna happen I can also post about it in the community section of the YouTube page as well which I think maybe I should do uh, so that some people might even know about uh, 
this talks outside the fox then anyways but uh yeah with that said uh again thank you for for having been here lynn uh, to do the talk about the sacred tree archetype and related topics and um yeah thank you all for listening and getting uh to this moment of the of the talk and uh yeah like subscribe and uh yeah if you have any questions or if you're interested in uh in anything more about leafy trees you can leave a comment or check out also um, Lynn's channel, Mosadala, as well. She talks there about the leafy trees, but also well, astrology as well, if you're interested in that. So make sure to check that out as well. Cheers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See you in the Discord server. Yes. See you.